Alrighty. Welcome to Container Gardening. We appreciate Country Max having us. Thank you, Kelly, for um, helping with the thing. And Paul has got the sign in sheets. So we're very excited to have you here. You ready? Yeah. So why garden with containers? Containers are easier to move around and you can put them in the sunshine or put them in the shade and dress up a spot. Uh, it's the way to go. Uh, what can be grown in a container? Pretty much anything. Vegetables, flowers, natives, all kinds of great plants. Uh, the advantages of having it in containers is it's right at your fingertips. You could have it right outside the kitchen window with herbs, or you could have it right outside your door so that you could pick vegetables or tomatoes or um, delicious. <laughs> uh, the disadvantages are you got to water a lot because the pot actually will dry out much quicker than the soil in the ground. So uh, when space is limited, like in, in your apartment or on the patio or in mobile homes, we have uh, raised beds that we can use or uh, create container gardening and have it work out really well. Uh, growing our own food helps, it keeps the cost down. Seeds are much less expensive and uh, you can, get a great yield from uh, container gardening in the different plants. It adds appeal to the landscape and it is bright, like I said before, it brightens up a, like a maybe a spot that might in the garden, you could put a container in the middle of like annuals or something just to give it a splash of color. Um, you can go uh, light, or you could go dark, or you could go, I'm talking about the, the flowers and have it be uh, like an exciting red, or you could do a calm white. I have a lot of gardens that are white. I'm not home much during the day. So in the nighttime, that white illuminates and I can enjoy my garden at night too. So, so like I said, it adds appeal to the landscape and uh, it's easier to move plants when they're in containers. Some people put them in a wheelbarrow and they will move it around in different spots so that it will get the sun. I have a lot of shade at my house. So I use that wheelbarrow to move things around so that I get the sunshine. Vegetables need eight hours of sun a day to really matriculate. And um, see what else can I tell you? Uh, they're great for gardening and people that it's hard to bend over um, containers. You can put them up on a table or have them in, in the patio. You can create something on the rail. Uh, so it's uh, containers are just the way to go. So the disadvantages are, like I said, it requires a lot of water especially during those hot summer days. And it may require frequent fertilization. Um, uh, even uh, fertilizer like 10-10-10 might be the way to go. Um, you know, the, in those three numbers, the first number is nitrogen, and that will make green leaves. It doesn't really do the flowers. It's like, that's gonna make it grow like a tomato plant, if you give it a lot of nitrogen, it's gonna grow a lot of leaves, not a lot of fruit. So uh, the second number is potassium and it need, the tomatoes need that a lot. So, but if you live near the watershed, you don't wanna use a lot of the potassium because it's not good for the watershed. So you gotta be really careful with that second number. And phosphate is also, the third number, and that is important, but it also is very dangerous putting it into our watersheds. So um, like if we were to do that straight across where it's equal, it's a good thing, it's a good thing. So 
Uh, containers can be heavy to move. Sometimes if like you need to have enough soil in there. So it, like, I love tomatoes. I'm gonna really talk a lot about tomatoes, you guys. Um, it, they need like five gallons of soil to really matriculate and grow. But they, that makes that pot so heavy, you know? So like, you know, at Home Depot, they sell those big five gallon tub. I drill holes in the bottom and I use that, but it can get very heavy. So I use, um, I put it on one of those caddies so that I can move it around or move it so that it's not just in one spot. I have a lot of woods in, near my house, so I don't have a lot of sunshine. I use my, my deck a lot plus of the animals. They don't come up on the deck as much, like the rabbits and the possums and the raccoons and chipmunks love to take bites, just single bites out of your tomato, you know, and squirrels too. So having animals around is tough. So, so to get started, there are four things that are most important. You got to pick the right container. If we're going to grow food, I need you to think about the container to be like uh, the right, it can't be toxic. Like you can't use a tire to grow vegetables. I need you to be thinking of um, in plastic, you want to do it where it doesn't have that BPA. I need you to make sure that the container you use is food um, tolerant. Ceram Some ceramics have lead in them. So you got to be careful of that. But if you tip it over, it, some, it would normally say what it's got in it. You know, um, terracotta is okay. You know, those clay pots. Um, and some ceramics are, are built to do food. So just make sure you're using good stuff so you don't poison yourself. And then the soil that you use in a container, when you go like here, they, would, they have different kinds of soils you can buy, container soils. It has a perlite in it. It makes it less um, dense and it's not as heavy. You can lift it up easier. And that mica in there makes it so that it's light and airy and the roots won't get as compact. So, and then again, got to water and you got to be thinking about the fertilizer. I use compost too. I always dress mine with a little compost on the top and I like worm castings. Um, there's a, a lady that sells, uh, she, it's divine, yeah, I'm not going to, Paul, help. Divine, the worm casting lady. She's over toward Canastota. Can't, yeah. Anyway, it's a compost that has worm castings that it's really good. It's good stuff. And um, that's a good fertilizer, too. So uh, any container can be used, like we were saying, plastic pots, wood barrels, baskets large enough to support the actual plant. Vegetable containers need to be food certified. I can't stress that enough. And uh, it needs drainage holes at the bottom. Don't want it to turn into a pond. And in many ways, raised beds are wonderful and just need to make sure it has good drainage. Here's a picture one. It helps so that you don't have to bend all the way over to the ground. And the rabbits can't really get up there. It's a little bit easier, you know? So the soil is very important. You wanna keep it fairly light in weight in the mix and aerated, and it needs to be able to drain. Um, we can purchase ready-made mixed mediums, or we can make our own. Soil from the garden is not recommended because it's very heavy and it um, has a lot of pathogens in it. It pests and also can have weed seeds. Um, we avoid using soil that was used in the previous season because it used up all of the nutrients. So if you are gonna use that soil from last year, I need you to amend it. I need you to put some compost in it, okay? And it wouldn't hurt to put a little bit of sand and just like mix it all up. So. Um, potting mixes are available. Um, 
They are uh, made of combinations of processed forest wood parts, peat, um, compost, sphagnum, peat moss, perlite or vermiculite, and the fertilizer and water agents like polymers. They those polymers actually are like little sponges, and they will hold water. And as the plant, like let's say it's in the beating sun, those polymers will help it so that it will um, stay and the plant won't wilt. Peat moss is a layer that is um, partially decom decomposed plant materials. And it comes from moss and grasses and it's formed over thousands of years and it's hard to replace. It takes a long time for peat moss to be made. So it's good for plants and it retains the water and it has lots of oxygen, but it's bad for the planet. Um, harvesting it, it kind of releases carbon dioxide, which is a major greenhouse gas and that's really not good for the climate. So, and it takes centuries for peat moss to be renewed. It's not short term. So minerals that are affected on the soil. So let's say we wanna grow blueberries. Blueberries need acidic soil. And that means that we're gonna use, um, like put some maybe coffee grounds and mix in things that are like acidic. Um, this actually don't want you to get too caught up in it, but that is the breakdown of the soil. Different fertilizers are available. You can do the over-the-counter one, or like I said, you could do a compost. And if you were to take some of the okra compost and put it into a gallon of water and let it sit, we call that compost tea. And it, it you let it sit there for like a day or so, and it actually is gonna, that water is gonna become like a good fertilizer liquid fertilizer that you could plant, put over your plants and have it work well. And then the worm castings, those red wigglers, they really do make some really sweet compost. So water is really important. Um, it requires, uh, everybody requires water, got to have it. So uh, you need you to not water too much. So you're gonna put your finger in the soil and if it feels like it's like really flat, don't water. But if it's, if it's absolutely dry, bone dry, give it some. So there's different ways to water. You can use a container on the bottom and water from the bottom. That really works out the best because when you water from the top, the roots will come up to the top and you want the plant to grow down, not up. So, um, thank you. So this is a, like, we're gonna get started and show you how to put it together. We've got a couple of little plants and we've got some compost and we've got some soil that's already mixed and there's water in the red bucket. So when you get ready to pot it up, we gotta make sure the pot has drain holes and we wanna fill the, um, the actual container with about a third of amount of soil and then take the plant and gently loosen the roots, tease them. You, you don't want to leave it so that it's all like all in a circle because it will just keep constricting and grow that way and girdle. So when you pull that pot or the plant out of that little pot and you need to tweeze those um, roots and if you can't tweeze them, use a knife and cut like three uh, right, right down and so that it will be able to come out and grow. So uh, what else can I tell you? We got to water and then let it drain and then put it in and then put soil around the, each of the plants that you've put in there and water it again. So got to make sure it has light and fertilizer. Vegetables are so fun to be grown in pots, but they really need the space. You can't do vegetables in like, um, like a little teeny tiny pot, like, like a quart. 
you need at least a gallon size. And like I said, tomatoes, I go five gallons. It, um, and I, I love those patio tomatoes and it's, it's, you can keep it right up top and it's prolific, but you gotta have enough soil. So you can start them from seed or you can go use plants and it's, um, it's easy. You can either purchase them or you could start from seed and have it grow right from there. It's more on vegetables. Most fruits bear vegetables such as tomatoes, peppers, squash, and they require at least six to eight hours of light. The root vegetables such as radishes, carrots, and onions, they love full sun. Leafy green vegetables like cabbage, spinach, lettuce, parsley, they can tolerate a little bit of shade. Um, you got to check the light requirements on each of what on the plants that you buy. It's just so that you're in the right um, containers that include that are good for uh, plants are like beets, beans, cabbage, carrots, cucumbers, eggplant, lettuce, tomato, peppers, and radishes, just to name a few. So these are the different crops, and those are the minimum sizes of the containers. And I want to say one of these handout has, has that on there. The size of the container is pretty important. Most beginners underestimate the size of the container. Tomatoes like that five gallon. And it's, you can see this one right here, it's kind of stunted the tomato's growth because it's only a gallon. So it's not going to, it's not going to produce too much. It, it's um, the roots get all gnarly in there. Herbs are so fun to grow in containers. Um, they like uh, thyme, oregano, parsley, rosemary, basil, chives, cilantro, lavender. Um, they add foliage texture and color as well as being edible. Lavender is also very fragrant. It's a fun one to be able to put up there. When you walk by it, it will release that aroma and kind of keeps the mosquitoes and um, bugs at bay. They don't like that lavender. So some herbs are medicinal. Medicinal. Um, we really don't get into too much of that though. Here's my pot all planted up. Herbs are less demanding than vegetables as far as plantings. Um, they are nice for outdoors or indoors. They just need adequate light. I have one of those arrow gardens in the um, dining room and it's right off the kitchen. And I use that all year long. I have muscalunge lettuce in there or I'll put in some herbs and it's uh, delicious to be able to just pick fresh and put it right into your cooking. So um, herbs needed enough water to keep the roots moist but it's not too much so that they rot. And if you stick your finger in there, you should be able to tell if it's dry or if it needs some water. Parsley is awesome for pasta dishes. Um, you can clip a little bit and it lasts for a long time. And the seeds are um, easy to grow. Uh, regular clipping herbs is encouraged so that it will grow lush. Keep pinching it back and use those uh, tiny tops that are nice and tender. When you grow indoors, you got to provide enough light. That's the biggest challenge. So those grow lights, I think there's a thing over here for a grow light that you can build. And um, that's a lot of fun. And let's see what else. Some of them need part shade and so, like mint. It doesn't need to have it. And um, cilantro grows really well indoors. Um, Otherwise, you might need to provide a grow light, like I said, to supplement the natural light. And if you bring herbs from outdoors, indoors, check for pests. Last thing you want to do is have bugs inside and um, spider mites. They also can have uh, gnats and they can have a fungus too. So in those white flies, uh, it's not much fun. I do love to have containers with flowers. Um, I like to do native flowers. Um, that way you're kind of helping the environment and all the pollinators. Um, 
consider the different flowers and the shapes and the textures and the colors um, and what's going to bloom from spring to fall. Um, sometimes you want some stuff like amaryllis at Christmas time. That's a fun one, those um, bulbs. That they're, they're a good one to bring in. Um, consider the colors and the leaves. Um, Got to just use your imagination. And different containers can be a lot of fun too. So uh, you can do cactus or you can do tropical plants inside. And perennials and annuals got to have enough light. Uh, grasses are interesting, but it's not easy to grow that in the house. If you have a kitty, you got to be careful because they will eat the grass. Yeah. So flowers are very fun. Uh, woody plants and bulbs can also be used. You can combine thrillers such as plants that fill and they, some of them that are, are like vines and can spill over. Um, plants and flowers and containers need to be groomed. Um, grooming may be like deadheading, pinching back, or checking for insects. And I use a trellis on some of my plants and the vines grow up instead of down. And um, that is very fun. Uh, hanging baskets can be used like wire baskets with moss or coir linings, and they're easy to construct. When you get ready to water those wire baskets, if you're inside, I need you to put it someplace where it's gonna catch the water because it will go right through. So this is the front porch. Um, got some pieces of wood that are um, a tree where we cut it down and it had was hollow on the inside and we made it into pots so we stick pots inside there it's a lot of fun but uh, the my my favorite pots are when you take the color wheel and you got to decide do you want it to be um, cohesive or do you want it to make it like a pop so if you want it to pop, you're going to do colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel. So that that lime green one down in the middle in the front with that red and the yellow, um, it, that's a sweet potato vine that's kind of like that chartreuse green. So, but you look at the color wheel and go opposite sides of the color wheel to make it pop. Got to have fun gardening. Let your imagination go. and. Uh, just the common objects that you gotta be able to, and the features that are in your garden. You can use pretty much anything, an old watering can. Um, just remember, if you're gonna use a dark colored container, it's gonna draw the light, so it might need a little bit more water. Uh, you know what I mean? Because it'll dry out or get hot, the roots will get hot. So, other ideas for containers is pick a theme or maybe the color like we were talking about and mix it up or you could do the contrasting. Um, sometimes people like to put those um, ones that have aromatic and use like a lavender or the rosemary or the scented geraniums. Natives are always awesome. They, they will attract um, the wildlife and butterflies and um, sometimes the birds will come down and might have some hummers. That's a lot of fun. And then um, the butterflies and swamp milkweed and the cone flowers, the echinacea. And sometimes like in, I have a lot of shade. So I use like pastas and different plants that are more apt to not grow so well in the full sun. And there are so many different hostas with their variegated color and that kind of thing that I can, in different size leaves, so that I can sort of get a mix it up that way. Uh, but there's no limits for containers. Could there's an old shoe or you could use a colander, um, boots. Uh, uh, on your railing, you can uh, put, hang some things. It's, it's pretty fun. Use your imagination. So just in review and plants, you need to have contain for container gardenings, you need to have the space and the room to grow and the nutrition mainly from the growing medium, the soil, it may need to be amended and the temperature. So the right temperature is essential. If you're in the middle of the beating sun, then I need you to be thinking about a plant 
that likes to be um, out there, like the blanket flower or um, Coreopsis that can just like handle that, that uh, sunshine. Uh, the light is very important for the photosynthesis and water is, is absolutely necessary. You gotta have clean, fresh air and the soil has gotta be um, well tended to and just make sure the time that you plant is like, like tonight we're gonna to be 37. So if you're gonna to plant tonight, I need you to bring it inside. <laughs> oh, these are our references. Thank you. Are there any questions? Hit me. Yep. How how deep is it? It's um, probably three feet deep. Good. Yeah. How much soil? Yeah. No, you got to do a little more than that. Are you doing what kind of flowers, vegetables? What are you growing? Yeah, yeah, and they need they need that five gallon to be to work. Uh, maybe a little more. Yeah, yeah. So because it's got to have room for the roots underneath when you get ready to pull it out. You know. Yep. So I that's how I use those five gallon um, can those big plastic with the holes in the I make holes in the bottom because it has to have enough soil. Yep. It's like that one picture of the tomato that was in the one gallon. It didn't have enough soil. Yeah. yeah. It, yep. Is it possible, um, you know, how you got a balcony for an apartment, you have to work yeah. and everything. Are you to do flowers? Yep. I was thinking this could become a strawberry. Yeah. So it's yep. Okay. Yeah. How much, how much light do you have? Do you have eight hours of light? You say yes. Yes. So you know how they have those strawberry pots that they are like, you got the, it's a, it's a, like a ginger jar, right? And then it's got the holes on the side and that, that works out really good because you can put more plants and they have those runners. So you, it, it's going to pull the runner up and it will grow all through the season. Yeah. 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 Strawberries in it. Yeah. That's too small. It's awful small. That's it's almost like when you buy a rose bush, it shows that it's in this container. But you know what? That rose needs to have like twice the soil amended underneath it, and you need to put it so the crown is pretty much on that level of the of the ground. And that if you were to, you wouldn't be able to pick it up if you bought a rose bush and the the what the like how you'd have to plant it. So. It's sometimes that that's you gotta know that you're gonna get it home, but you need to use a lot more soil. Is it possible mm -hmm. to grow a blueberry plant or a raspberry mm -hmm. plant? Yes. Yes. Yep. You, um, yep, I put it in the garage. I gotta tell you, I have deer. Have deer, and guess what? They like blueberry trees. They do. Mm -hmm. Um, you not really. They they are acidic, so they want that soil to be. A, they, their soil is a little bit different. Blueberries, okay. Blueberries need it. They need acidic, acidic soil. Blueberries yep. Strawberry. Yep. Hi. Yeah. Yep. I got a bunch of stuff right here that talk about compatible. So they talk about the three sisters. It's corn, beans, and well, what's the other one? <laughs> it's not peas. <laughs> Squash, thank you. That's the three sisters. <laughs> and they the corn grows up tall and the other ones climb up the corn. It's pretty awesome. And they like the same kind of soil. Yeah, thank you. Going back to the yeah. blueberries, you said it needs acidic soil. It does. As far as strawberries and raspberries, is it compatible? Strawberries, I don't know if they're as acidic as they 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 need to have that. Um on the top, like the hay or something, just keep it so that it's it's there. But I I don't think they're acidic. We'd have to look. Yep, Google it. So you're saying you use like a hay? Yeah, you should put a little bit of on the uh, like put uh or grass clippings or something on the top just to keep the soil moist and it just yep. So that way when the yeah when the when the strawberries have 
they, if they touch the ground, they're going to mold. So yeah. that's what I'm yeah. talking about. Get get them up with yeah. off the ground. Could he run like a, a zucchini? Could he run? Could he just go straight up? Um, depends on what variety. Yeah. yeah. Yep, and, and normally squash do run, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like cucumbers, they like to be supported. Yeah, so. I mean, so yep. Gonna, yeah, gonna that will work. Yeah. Yep, yep. And then those plants that need a little bit of shade, they could be like if, when you do those trailers, you could put somebody in like on, in there so that they aren't gonna get that hot beating sun where it's like, you know, melt your melt your face off. You're good? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I would also say, um, as far as like fig trees, for mm -hmm. example, I have a friend and he states that he's growing it for years and what he does is instead of leaving it growing during the winter time, he says you got to bury it in the soil. Have you heard that before? Yeah, that will so work. In other words, it's not going to work then to do a fig tree in a container. So is it in our area that you're leaving it outside and you're burying yes. it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. My grandma had big trees. Right. My grandma had trees like um, apricots and peaches and cherries and that kind of stuff. And she, she had figs, but they were inside. She didn't ever have them outside. She lived in Cortland. So I don't know. Have you ever tried like a lilac tree? Yep. Yep. Yep, lilacs are, are good here. No, I've never brought it inside. I have my lilacs are outside. I did get some this last year that are ever blooming. So I'm I'm hoping that they'll come back. Sometimes I think they are not like downstate would be a better spot for them. They it's a little bit different zone. Our four or five zone is a little chilly. You so know what I found out is obviously you can't in <laughs> Hatred, you're familiar with it. Everyone's familiar with hatred, right? One time I asked them, I said, Well, is it possible to put tulips in the pot? Yeah. In the pot? Yeah. And leave it out, like, for example, at the cemetery. And they told me yes. So oh, it gets pretty cold here. And on top of that, the way I have it set up, think of this like this is the ground right here. Yeah. So I have like a big, like, big pot. Yeah. So it's like that high, that halfway was in the soil. Right? Our winter is so harsh. Right. It killed. So some like this day. last winter, we really weren't that cold. Yeah. But I mean, we've had winters where like the apple trees have burst because it's got so cold. You know what I mean? So going back to the lilac tree, you said that you put it in a container. Um, you leave it outside, even if it's in the container? You would have to if you were to Bring leave a outside. container outside. You would need to um, yeah. wrap it up or something because it that if when it's in the soil it's it's um, insulated right you get it so okay. sure so are there any plants that you would partner together mm -hmm. um, to prevent um, pests or animals mm -hmm. um, yep. so that yep. they won't let's say eat, eat tomato your tomatoes or yep. Yep. So I have, I, I use a lot of marigolds. They don't like that, the, you know how marigolds have that distinct smell mm -hmm. or a scented geranium. Those are, yeah. those are good. So um, sometimes uh, clippings of hair, human hair around something will keep like the rabbits away. Yeah. They don't like human yeah. hair. Yeah. yeah. So there are, there are definitely things you can use in um, like, um, Different plants are like will keep mosquitoes away, like those citronellas. You, sometimes they have those in the. It will be a little bit like after the Memorial Day, you'll see potted citronella plants, and they that's fun. Just brushing by it, and that smells good, and it it uh, keeps those keeps those bugs away. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah, basil's another one. Yes. How do you prevent? You know, like how do I keep them? You can go a little higher. 
but what about chipmunks? That yeah, can't they go everywhere. everywhere. I know it. They really do. I have a real problem with that. I've okay. I have a kitty, and he is he goes in and out, and okay. he's yeah he's prolific with the chipmunks. Oh, okay. so yeah, right. but I and mean, I know I yeah yeah it's um. I have, I, sometimes you can use cheesecloth when things start to get ready to be mature okay. and you want, but they're pretty, they're pretty smart. They can yeah. get inside the cheesecloth, you know? Yeah. No. So you see it moving and it's like, who in there? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. You got company. <laughs> you mentioned fertilizer and everything. Yep. I'm trying to do organic. I think organic. Good. With that in mind, is it Right. Mm -hmm. so yeah, you, you could use com yeah, the okra compost is pretty yeah, good stuff. Yeah, I, I know it. Or, or chicken manure or um, horse manure that's aged seven years. Like you want to make sure the nitri nitrate is out of there. You know how like, it's like. The okra I've heard pH is 8.6. Yeah, yep, yep. So, and it depends on what they, it isn't like they have, it, it's, it's, it depends on what they put in it. You know what I mean? In that, that batch. So, yeah. All good. Got any other questions? With the containers, like you said, you, you mentioned that you put it in, a, in your garage. You With my plants? Yeah. Yeah. I Like tonight I have, I have planted up all my dahlias in my tubers and in that 80 degree day I knew it you know what I mean and it was like I had them outside for that first night and then after that they're all inside like a big old bucket that I can lift up and they are inside right they're tender 70, right. well. yep they're so tender you can't you can't do it I bought mm -hmm. gardening soil that so my dahlias are in pots, right? And they've got container soil in there. And I'm gonna let it matriculate and get going. I'm gonna trim back those shoots so that it's not gonna be like, um, I'm gonna get good flowers. And, but I, they, aren't, they aren't going outside until the frost is passed. And I bought garden soil and I'm gonna just, where I have my tulips and my, um, my, uh, different bulbs right now. I'm going to lay, put those, take the dahlias out of the pots and put them around over that bulb area and then load it with more soil. So it's going to be kind of like a raised bed, but no sides. And I'm try it that way. See if I can, I don't have a lot of sunshine, so I got to, I got to make hay where I can, you know. Is it yeah. possible to train? Vegetables, you know, like a container, you know, okay, okay, a container, like you said, right. bonsai family, yeah. with tomatoes, and add it. So, it's, you know, if it's sprouting outside, like yeah. a tree, they say you want it to grow this way, mm -hmm. okay, up to the top, you want it to grow straight up, you're going to yeah. the side. Can you do that with, with tomatoes or any vegetable? Yeah, the right. If you do that, you could you could actually train it like take um, maybe bread ties or something in, in a maybe like a tomato cage yeah. and try to pull it that way. But for the most part, things want to grow up. Yeah. You want to grow to the sunshine. So if the sun, let's say it's in an overhang and the sun is going to be coming from an angle, it's going to go that way. It's going to go to the sunshine. How would you change the pH? Soil. Yeah. Yep. Uh, alkaline. Yep. Yeah. So you, it's you amend it, but it, uh, you can. It depends on what you need to do. But yep, you're gonna go and you could use lime, or you could go. There's on that one. I'm trying to think. Is this one's over here? Um, I I don't have that um hand out here. But if you were to pull up on Google, it it would tell you which way to go to make it so that you're gonna make it either sweeter. Or you're gonna make it more acidic. Can't remember the name of flower. The one that has a big, big bloom. Mm -hmm. Hydrangea. Yeah. Yep. And you see it, okay. Yep. Correct me if I'm wrong. And it's acid, it's red. Mm -hmm. Right. You can make it go. Right. 
Um, the, some of them are purple, you know what I mean? Some of them, some of them are, purple. but that the iron is with the um, blue, it needs iron. So like a, to buy a nine inch nail that's iron and then shove those into the ground, you know, it's gonna take a while to, to break out. So, all good? Right, my garage not heated. So, and and I there are some plants that are more tender that wouldn't make it in our winter if you weren't going to put it, you know, in the ground. So, just depends on what what uh, kind of plant. Mm -hmm. Will it get cold enough though? You know how it has to get like a bulb needs to have that winter. Yeah. Yeah. So it needs you need to make sure it's going to be cold enough. But it's not going to kill the bulb loss, but it will, you know, build up. It might rot. You know what I mean? If it was too warm, it might need it needs yeah. to freeze, you know, get cold. Not uh, not here. Not here. Not I know not in central New York. Well, some people aren't from here. They don't, they don't realize the different zones and, you know, some winters it's mild, you know? We didn't get to ski this year. Oh. <laughs> All righty, thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs>